Okay, so let's get this week started from over here on Magaluf Beach. I'm over here in the Foodinetta Cafe once again with my Monday morning frappuccino. But I do have an update with some flight information for you following my video from flying back to Mallorca from Bristol Airport. Plus, we're going to take a look at some of your comments because you guys have left me some very, very in interesting information too, which I think you should all know about. Plus, we're going to take a look at how the storms may well affect water quality on some of the island's beaches this week too. I also have a weather forecast for the week ahead. And if you keep watching until the end of this video, I'm going to let you know how you can get the most affordable Oasis experience in Europe at the moment. And we're talking the band here as well, Oasis the band. First, before I continue, I'm going to ask you to consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. I bring out a Monday morning update every single week, giving you all the latest travel news and the very best information that you're going to need before you come over here on holiday too. Plus I've got plenty of guides and tips for things to do and see on the island on the channel too. So subscribe to the channel and also enable that notification bell too so you don't miss a video. But we're going to start this video by just giving you an update following my flight back to Palma last week with Ryanair. Now, in many of the media outlets from September the 1st, they did actually incorrectly say that airlines within Europe would be standardising hand luggage sizes going onto airlines, going onto, onto planes as well, and that everyone would be entitled to take a carry-on bag and it's all measure the same size, but I'm afraid this is not the case. Now, I have to say, if you are travelling, regardless of whichever airline you're travelling with, make sure you check the dimensions of any kind of luggage that you're taking, whether you're checking it in or you're carrying it aboard the plane. But I do have some good news in that the airlines are trying to work with the EU to set some kind of standard limit for carry-on luggage to make sure that it's kind of fair for everyone and everyone is allowed to bring some kind of hand luggage onto the plane that meet and fit certain dimensions. But I do have a warning for you now. Each airline does have a set baggage requirement size and they could change this at any time as well. So this is why I say before you travel, even if you've always travelled with the same luggage that you have done over the years, go back and check the sizes. Make sure it includes wheels if you're taking on a small case onto the plane as well and make sure it fits those dimensions. Or as you saw in my last video, you could be subject to paying extra if you're at the departure gate. You may be asked to pay extra if your baggage does not meet those sizes. Now in my video you would have seen how strict Ryanair staff were over at Bristol Airport at the departure gates with regards to check-in luggage. So I've also found that not all airports are quite the same as Bristol Airport so you might actually be quite lucky depending on the size of your luggage. So I have a comment here from JP Heath who says, I flew Birmingham to Palma Ryanair a few weeks ago and not once was any bag size checked. So that's good news. At least they're not checking yet at Birmingham, but just, just bear in mind those checks could take place at, at any moment or at any time. Chris says, we got ripped off with EasyJet as well. We had the right size hand luggage according to their website, but they refused it and we had to pay extra not good so it's not just Ryanair that this applies to just bear in mind that all of the airlines can also change the sizes of the luggage and also I just have to say too I had a call from a friend of mine who actually lives on mainland Spain he was flying Air Europa back into the island too and he said that they were checking hand luggage sizes as well at the departure gate too and also charging charging people as well for bringing oversized luggage so just bear in mind it's not just Ryanair I always give Ryanair quite a bad rap in my videos but um, it's not just Ryanair it's also EasyJet and and Air Europa too. But I do have a comment from Keith and he says he's had trouble with EasyJet many times and if it's a choice, I'll, I'll fly Ryanair anytime. Not many people say that, but there are some viewers that do say that. Let me know in comments which airline you prefer as well. I'd love to know. In fact, I might actually run a community poll on that. So um, I'm just intrigued to know how many people actually have a really good Ryanair experience. Anyway, Another, another comment as well, this is actually a really valid point, particularly if you're travelling on a budget, um, because don't forget, if you are just coming over with a very small bag, don't forget you can buy just about everything here on the island super cheaply, especially in the resort like Magaluf, we've got the, the teddy shops here that sell t-shirts and shorts for something like one, or, one to three euros, you can get flip-flops for a euro. And, and, and the toiletries are super cheap here as well. So you don't always have to bring absolutely everything over uh, with you. You can actually shop locally as well if you do want to save some money. So um, this comment here said, airlines seem to change baggage sizes every few years. So I might start buying stuff at the destination. 
do it. I mean, you support the local eco economy as well. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. If you're traveling on the budget, definitely get stuff here. You're gonna find it's a lot cheaper, particularly, and I have to say, the boots at Bristol Airport is very expensive compared to the boots that you're gonna find. Um, and I'm talking UK here, apologies to my international viewers. If you are coming through a UK airport and you are shopping at the Boots Pharmacy um, at the airports, they're going to have a bit of a markup on prices. I've noticed that those prices are more expensive in the airport than you're going to find on the high street. And if you wait till you shop, until when you get here to Mallorca, you're going to find prices to be a lot, lot cheaper. So just bear that in mind too. Okay, another tip for travelling low cost as well, and, and this is my tip actually, when you book your flights, if you, if you know you're definitely going to come and you're not going to change your flight, check in as soon as possible and get that boarding card um, on your phone and that will guarantee your seat because some airlines do have a habit of overselling their flights because they're hedging their bets that sometimes some people will not turn up for their flights and, and that does happen, which means that if you don't check in, you might not actually get to go. So um, I've heard this happen many times in the past and it's also been right, widely reported, but if you don't get your boarding card and they have all this oversold that flight, particularly when it's busy, particularly during holiday season, you may not actually get to travel. So Lucy left the following comment here and she said, it's all money-making excuses. My friend recently flew with Ryanair and their online check-in wasn't working. So they charged them 50 pounds each to check in at the desk. Now, another point as well, it may be that the, the online check-in might go down, it might not work on the day of travel. Don't forget, you normally have about two hours before the flight to, to check in. So just bear in mind, if you're trying to check in and it's less than two hours before your flight, you're not going to be able to check in for it online. You're going to have to check in at the desk. I'm not sure if that's actually what happened, but sometimes websites do fall down, they do fall over and they don't work. So try and get your boarding pass as soon as possible to avoid having to face those hefty check-in fees at the airport. Team. Not only that as well, another case as well where um, an airline, I think it's actually Ryanair again, they actually had to downsize their plane. So they took one plane out of service, they moved everyone onto a much smaller plane and they'll prioritise passengers who've actually paid for their seats, as this viewer stated as well. And um, they said, Ryanair wanted to deny us boarding because we hadn't paid for an allocated seat. We will never travel with those crooks again. So just bear that in mind. Check in, know you're going, print your pass, at least you've got it, and then you, you know more or less that you're, you're most likely going to get your flight, unless of course they cancel, which if that's the case, don't forget to check out my video all about um, your rules and your rights as well if, if flights get cancelled, and I'll drop a link to that video in the description text below. Do you know what, I'll pin it at the end of this video as well. Okay, but I wanted to give you some good news as well regarding Ryanair, because um, I've given them a bashing over the past 12 months or so. So this is a really important point and this is particularly useful if you're traveling with a family. And at this time of year in September, in the final couple of um, months of the season, we're gonna get a lot of families with, with non-school aged children coming over, or indeed some families with school aged children coming over. But it's in terms of checking luggage and pulling your luggage as well. And don't forget, this only applies to check-in luggage. So this has been taken from the Ryanair website site and it talks about whether bag pooling is allowed when you're checking in your suitcases and yes it is now it does say on their website that bag pooling is allowed between passengers with check-in bags on the same flight reservation so that's really important if you're checking in the family of course you're going to be on the on the same flight reservation if you're traveling with your mates maybe make sure there's just one booking as well that means you can pull your luggage and it means that if you have say two 20 kilo check-in bags so that's going to be 40 in total on one flight booking one of them can say weigh 15 kilograms and the other can then weigh 25 kilograms however they do also state that no one bag can weigh more than 32 kilograms as well so that's actually some really good news if you're coming over here with a family just also make sure you check the dimensions of your bags as well if you're flying too so once again I'll drop a I'll drop a link to the cabin baggage regulations as well for Ryanair because I always get asked about them and I can't remember remember them off the top of my head so I'll drop a, a link below to those in case you you want to check however I have a final comment from a viewer called John who says I'd sooner go on the bus and have a week in Skegness than travel anywhere on the Ryanair which leaves us on to talking about the islands let's talk about Mallorca and what's going on this week 
Now, as we're rolling into the second week of September, we have had a little bit of a rainy start to, to the month. And as you may well know as well, if you watch my live stream from yesterday, you'll know that we actually had quite a bit of rain yesterday morning as well. We've had some storms as well in the past week too. What does this mean for the island? Well, it's meant we have had in the past 10 days or so some beaches on the island being red flagged. And that is with regards to water quality and the water quality not being good enough for anyone to go swimming so they've popped a red flag on the beaches. Now, we have seen Port de Soyer Beach closed for a few days. We've seen Albuquerque Beach in Port de Poyenza closed. We've also seen in Playa de Palma closed too. I do believe these beaches are open at the moment. However, it normally takes a couple of days for the beaches to actually get red flags following a storm and as you know we had the rain yesterday so I'm a little bit concerned that we may see those red flags popping up during the course of the week. If they do, do not worry too much. It's not going to ruin your holiday. It just means that you may well have to travel a little bit further along the coast to find a flag that is flying green which means that you are allowed to swim in the sea and it's, the water is perfectly safe and the, the water quality is good enough. Also, I made a video last summer up in Porto Poyence where we did have several days of red flagged beaches um, and it gave plenty of top tips about places that you can go to if a beach is flagged, is red flagged, so go and check that out. I'll also pin this right at the end of this video here. Don't forget too, we've got plenty of restaurants with swimming pools, we've got the water parks that are open, we've got hotels that also do day passes if, you, if you're staying somewhere that doesn't have a pool too, so there are plenty of options. Don't worry too much, but... Um, Fingers crossed we're not going to get any red flag issues this week, but um, I have a horrible feeling it, it could be a possibility. Also, we've got the rest of the schools going back this week as uh, parents throughout the islands breathe a huge sigh of relief following an almost three-month summer holiday. And you guys back in the UK think you've got it bad with, with about five or six weeks holiday. Oh, my goodness. So we're going to see the, the atmosphere weekdays at least change dramatically on the island as, as kids are going to be returning to the classrooms and the beaches during the day are going to be a little bit more empty as well, which is going to be fantastic. This is a great time of year to visit. I have to say and um, it's you're going to find it a lot easier to park in the resorts i had absolutely no problems parking this morning it's a lot lot easier to park during the weeks at least in the resorts however just bear in mind that with kids returning to school with people going back to work rush hour around palmer is going to be a nightmare so maybe just give the roads a miss between about a quarter past eight and 9 30. Oh my goodness, we've got quite a party down here, right at the end of the Food and Etta Cafe, uh, celebrating down here in Magaloo, which explains for the cheering behind me. I hope they're having a good time. Also, just because we're in September, it doesn't mean to say that we're done with the summer fiestas. I'm going to be sharing anything that looks quite good and quite interesting for you over on the Mallorca Under the Sun Facebook page. Make sure you give that a follow. I'll drop a link in the description text below. But it looks like later on this month, um, we're going to be having a fantastic fiesta over in Selva, which is kind of near Campanet on the way to Poyenza. So go ahead and check that out. The details are on the Mallorca Under the Sun Facebook page. So there's plenty going on. I'll continue share sharing any kind of major events over on that page too so you can look out for things to do on the island for free too okay which leads us on to the weather well down here on Magaluf Beach on Monday morning it's still quite a sweltering 28 29 degrees We've got a little bit of patchy cloud rolling in today However, we're going to be having highs of 28 degrees and it's going to get a little bit cooler as we go on into the course of the week. It's still going to be hot. Do not worry if you're coming over. Daytime is going to be hot. We're going to have plenty of sunshine too. However, I have seen on the weather forecast that we're going to see a slight risk of showers coming through on Thursday. It's only Monday now. Those, that threat of showers may actually disappear by the time we get to Thursday, um, quite possibly. However, we do have a slightly higher threat of rain on Friday. It's looking like an 80% chance of rain, but once again, that could change as well. The good news is that we don't have any weather warnings in place. However, if you are part of the Mallorca Under the Sun Facebook group, if we do have a weather warning, then I will post about that as well. So if you're over here on holiday, you're gonna know all about any kind of orange or yellow weather alerts that we have, whether they are orange or yellow. Um, and, I'll, and I'll post about those as well on the day that we have them. So just keep an eye out on that in case you're over here on holiday. 
Evening temperatures, we're looking at lows of around 15 degrees by next Sunday, which means it's going to be a little bit chilly if you're coming out here. So bring a, bring a light jacket, bring a coat, maybe bring some long trousers, some jeans, or maybe a light jumper. If you're looking at eating, eating out in the evenings as well, it will feel a lot cooler, which is no bad thing, but it also means you're going to sleep a lot better as well. So if you don't have air conditioning in your accommodation, you're going to get a better night's sleep. Like I said, it's a wonderful time of year. I'm so relieved it's September. Anyway, finally, let's talk about the most affordable Oasis experience that you're going to get, and it's going to be right over here in Mallorca. Now, as I mentioned, the, the hottest act for 2025 on the music scene is going to be getting tickets for to see Oasis over in the UK or wherever, actually. And if you missed out on the concert tickets, and my goodness me, lots of people have missed out on them, um, and missed out on paying the very high prices for those tickets as well, well, you're going to be in for a treat next weekend because quite possibly the hottest tribute band for 2024 and 2025 is going to be the band Live Forever. They are an Oasis tribute group and they are playing on the 14th of September at 9.30 at the S. Gremi Centre in San Castello, which is just on the outskirts of Parma. You can easily get a bus or a taxi there. Tickets are 16 euros or 22 euros on the door and you can enjoy what should be the most affordable Oasis experience ever. So let me know if you go. It should be good. I'll drop a link to their Instagram as well below. You can go and see what they're like. So that's going to be the must go to event for this weekend. Okay, everyone, I'm going to be out and about in the resorts for the rest of the week as well. So as I said, don't forget to consider subscribing to the channel to catch those videos. I've got loads more information coming out of the resorts this week. So you know what to expect if you're coming over here on holiday this September, plus some other interesting items too. So keep an eye on the channel for that. Don't forget, you can find me on the Facebook group and on my Instagram, also called Mallorca Under the Sun, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Goodbye for now.